The priorities from the, from the Law Council's perspective will be a review of the Duty to Solicitor Scheme, which is the scheme that provides free legal advice to anyone who's detained at the police station. Um, that was supposed to be reviewed after three years and it's now into its seventh year, so that's well overdue. Um, and we'd like to see the backlog of, um, of cases awaiting appointment of a chairman, uh, you know, have the back of that broken in some way and, um, and a solution found because there are cases that have been stuck in that position for a very long time now. You spoke of conflict between government parties within the legal sector. I think we've seen it highlighted this year yeah. on a large scale in the inquiry. Is this just an inescapable part of doing business in Gibraltar or do you think this is something that needs to be worked on? It's very much a Gibraltar issue, but, um, but we can find a solution and I've, and I've mentioned what the solution could be. Uh, the, the, the recruitment of new chairpersons, which I understand is underway, would need to focus on chairpersons that, aren't, that don't do work for government and in particular, as I've said, don't intend to do work for government because it would be, you know, it would be a waste of time to recruit um, lawyers into that into those chair, chairman uh, positions that then take on government legal work and conflict themselves out. Um, but that's surely a conversation that the ministry can have with potential candidates. Another mention uh, you made was of the exponential growth of women in the sector. Yeah. This has been plain, I think, for all to see, but yeah. at the very highest level on the bench, the loss of Ms. Karen Ramage yeah. means no women represented at the top level. Is this something you'd like to see changed? Whilst it would be ideal to have female representation on the bench, um, and certainly I'm sure that the community and the bar would certainly welcome that, we also understand that there are um, constraints and that at the end of the day, the best candidate um, will be chosen. Um, but yes, it would be, it would be wonderful to see another mem a female member of the bench in the not too distant future. On a lighter note, you spoke of the potential of bringing the equivalent of the legal walk oh, yeah. that takes place in London. There were a few murmurs in the gallery from people who will likely be roped into it, so yeah, tell me about yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, look, I mean, we're always looking for, for, for opportunities to, to socialize and network and, you know, in our profession in particular, put the gloves down for a day um, and this would be a, a great opportunity to do so. It, it's also in, in England, it's a fundraising event, so any proceeds raised would go to, to local charities. Mm. And finally, on a personal note, uh, congratulations on your achievements so far. And Thank what are your thoughts on this being your last address as, as chair? Um, yeah, it's been, as I've said every year, it's a privilege to address um, the, the courts uh, on this occasion. It's now my fifth year addressing the courts, including the pandemic years. But I think it's time for someone else to step in and, uh, and provide uh, uh, a breath of fresh air.